G'day ladies and gents. So today, what we are doing is putting this into this. So what we've actually got here is some bits that have been repurposed from an older build and some brand new bits. So, this subwoofer here was actually in the Skoda Octavia that I had for a while there and I ripped it out when I sold it. It's perfectly fine. It's an eBay subwoofer. It cost very little, but it did the trick just fine and the wiring kit that came with it. This is a brand new head unit, Android from God knows where in China most likely, and it replaces, as you can see, the top air vents um, inside the car. I'll show you a bit closer when we get to the car. It's a hell of a glare. So these two things combined, it should make a nice difference in the car. It's just one of those things, there's a quality of life difference. The car out there, I haven't introduced yet, it is a 2007 Subaru Legacy, all-wheel drive of course, because Subaru, it's the non-turbocharged edition, which, you know, it would be nice to have the turbo in it, because everyone loves a turbo, but to be honest, with that engine, the turbo does reduce the reliability of it. Also, that's an older car, it's got like 200 something thousand Ks on it. It is a simple daily driver, A to B, something that sounds good, something that drives well, doesn't break down on me and looks fine. So the order of operation is going to go. Installing this here power cable first, I'll find a grommet inside the engine bay that I can run this into the cabin. Then we're gonna install this head unit and then we're gonna install the rest of the sub. The reason for doing it in that order is because that means I can do it all in one hit. If I install a head unit first, then I'm gonna to have to pull it back out again to wire in the sub but I can't do most of the subwoofer wiring, all these RCAs and everything. I can't do that on the stock head unit. I can only do that on this aftermarket unit. So, power first, then head unit, then rest of sub. Let's get to it. <laughs> it's always the same with these things. All right, so what I'm trying to do is get to the back. Um, there's, I found a grommet right in the middle there. I need to get back here behind, it's a super zoomed in camera angle, but I need to get back in behind the glove compartment there. And so I've removed the, um, the actual sort of lid of it, but I want to get behind this plastic piece, which is barely held into the dash, you know? Um, I've managed to undo everything except this corner here. But that also means I think I have to take off this piece, which means I have to take off this piece. <laughs> I think I have to do all this anyway to get to the stereo, which will go here. The stereo is going to go up here. This is the stock stereo, uh, but the, the aftermarket one's going to go up there. So I'm just going to have both. I don't know how exactly that's going to be wired. I'm not, I'll just work out as I go. But, so I think I'm just going to have to keep pulling all this stuff apart get this whole center console out. Here we go. All right, <clears throat> that's incredibly hard to see, but trust me, the nail is there, so we have found our way through. Now, I'm just gonna find a way of grabbing it and uh, dragging as much of it as I can into the cabin bay here. That's the next fun bit. <laughs> this is literally what it is installing an amplifier in a car. Um, yeah, I've done it a couple of times at this stage, so I know how it goes. Oh! <sighs> 10 kroner. Do you got, do you got, good girl. So All right, so as you can see, I have managed to drag the power cable into the car. Success! On this end, you can see that this um, grommet is a little bit looser around the edge than I would like, but honestly, it's probably okay. All right, love it. So, got all the cable in, got it uh, temporarily routed pretty neatly off the battery here, up the back. Oh, I will zip tie everything up so it, it holds nicely and just pops down there. It's not the absolute cleanest looking thing in the world, but it's far from the worst. So now just gonna get inside and uh, run this cable down here all the way under the trimming. Um, I th think I'm gonna put the sub in the boot, at least to start with, we'll see how we go. So uh, yeah, let's just get to running this cable and then we can start on 
the head unit install. Whoa, <laughs> what a battle, man. <laughs> Holy crap, got it. So the way we've done this is we run it down here. Originally, I was gonna run it down the side here, but I just didn't have enough cable in the end um, because of all the extra that's going on in the engine bay. So what I've ended up doing is running it down the middle next to, well, the center console, you know? And then underneath this piece of carpet, under the seat and into Boom. As you can see, don't have much cable there, but it's enough. So now, put back together what I need to put back together here, or maybe even not, maybe just, I think I'm just gonna jump straight into the stereo install. How I go about doing that is anyone's guess, I'm really not sure. I'm just gonna do what I always do, give her a whirl. <clears throat> I've created a mess. Holy, look at this, jeez. <laughs> Pulled apart everything to get to the stereo here. Yeah. <laughs> it's a learning experience. It's the first time I've ever pulled apart this car, so uh, obviously there are more efficient ways of doing this, but I had not found them yet. <laughs> so, anyways, what I will go and do is go and collect the aftermarket radio and just hold her up. But I think basically what we're going to be doing is taking these two plugs and putting them into the aftermarket radio. And this black one, which you can barely see all the way down the bottom there, is for the climate control unit, which is this lower portion. And so we're keeping that. But this upper portion, this has its own plug. The, uh, the hazard lights has its own plug, as you can see. But all of this radio here, for the time being, I think is just going to be kind of dead. It's just going to kind of be there. Um, I might be able to work out a more... What's the word I'm looking for? Elegant solution. But for the time being, I think we are literally just going to unplug everything and slap it into the other one. Let's go and get the other one, have a look at it. Okay, so we have created a hell of a mess, but that's all right. Um, these plugs typically only go in one way. So let's have a quick look at what we've got here. This is the aftermarket radio. In the back, we've got an adapter harness that um, I believe the, all the main plugs from the main harness plug into this then the other ends from this go into the back of here that's a power port oh no wait that's the main harness port yeah. I don't know <laughs> we're just working this one out as we go but as you can see on the back of here everything has very specific sizing and pins so it really is just a case of finding which of these white connectors fits in what hole here and as far as plugging up the android head unit goes i've done a couple of these and that's just the way it goes yeah so now the only other thing that i think i need to do is if you have a quick look at this see these these long bits um this obviously doesn't have them and i do believe i need to unclip them somehow it doesn't look too difficult i hope maybe and install them on this one they mightn't line up perfectly is what youtube was telling me so we'll find out god the mess that i've created here is just insane I've, i don't think i've ever created such a big mess doing a radio installation but just to get to this you have to take off so much stuff it's wild these actually did end up more or less lining up um what's not particularly strong are these vents they pop out of little brackets pretty easily, but that's okay, this is a cheap head unit. But, um, YouTube was wrong. <laughs> These ones actually do line up pretty well with no real modification, it's just a case of lining them up and putting little screws in, so pretty happy with that, actually. Now comes the fun bit of working out this mess here. Gonna plug this into this, see what lines up with that, and then, I've just got to find a uh, remote turn-on wire for the sub-amplifier that I'm putting in the back. 
Um, but yeah, that's about it. It's pretty, actually pretty basic. So check out this mess. <laughs> there is a whole extra, can you focus please? There's a whole extra plug. I'm really not sure what it's for, but most of it's teed off. So I'm guessing it's just for a different version of the stereo, maybe the Japanese version. I don't know. But this fits into this, this extra connector here, fits right into this harness connector. Goes into the back here. Then I've got all these running off. Then all these cables, these are the ones that you gotta pay attention to. I mean, these, these are all for your aftermarket stereo stuff. Like if I had an aftermarket set of speakers in the car, then I could connect them directly to this. Uh, some of them at least, you know, like audio out left and right. This is a subwoofer out, so I'm actually gonna be connecting my sub to this green one. Um, some of these others are really not sure. Video in, okay, so that's uh, cables, uh, cables, backup camera. Now, this blue one, I think that's the one I'm looking for. That's a remote turn on wire for the amplifier. And what that'll do is, of course, turn on the amplifier when this head unit gets power, which it should when accessories or the ignition goes in the car. So, what I think I'm gonna do is, um, quickly wire up and like very loosely wire up this. I'm not going to be soldering this this um, remote turn on wire. It is such a small voltage. It'd be shocking if it started a fire as well as I will of course insulate it with tape and stuff like that. But by not soldering it, it makes it a bit easier to, you know, remove the stereo when I sell the car, which I tend to do because getting stereo equipment here in Iceland is like free ridiculously expensive and so I just hold on to my stereo equipment and really all I'm installing is a sub everything else is stock standard so yeah let's grab that remote turn on wire quickly wire it onto this blue one and then I will quickly also wire in an RCA for this sub that's about it I think maybe what I'll do is quickly just loosely wire up the subwoofer and that way we can test before we go any further whether the wiring actually works. Let's try that. All right, got everything loosely wired up. Not the subwoofer yet, but I've got the, um, the head deck loosely wired up. So I've reconnected the battery. Let's just see if the head unit turns on. Well, bam, immediately, holy crap. Okay, geez, that was fast. Well, because of YouTube copyright music stuff, I can't show you me testing it or let you hear it, but it works. So trust me on that. That's awesome. I'm very happy with that. It went straight on like immediately. So that's awesome. In which case, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to quickly wire up the sub, um, just super janky wiring to start with, and uh, just try it out make sure that it's bump and base, and then we can actually properly wire it into the car. So. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to put it in the back of the way that power cable is. Bit of a pain in the butt, but we'll do it. honestly a marathon <laughs> and uh, I have this many screws left over somehow I I don't understand <laughs> I've looked everywhere for where these might live um, and the only guess that I can muster is that the bits I pulled out basically that had some extra screws in it that this one does not it I have no idea but uh, I'll keep them around just in case. I only broke a few clips, but uh, everything went back together pretty much exactly how it's supposed to. One major thing that I did screw up was um, I tried to get, when I was wiring it up, I did try and take the, uh, the signal wire from what I thought was probably the signal wire back here, and I was a genius. And anyway, it didn't work, but my genius plan was, okay, then I'll just steal it from one of the other power wires. And uh, after testing a bunch, I decided, okay, I can cut this one with no problem. It shouldn't be needed for anything. And so I cut it and I took the signal wire and so the sub works. Fantastic. 
However, I later found out that that wire looped back into power this unit here. I'm not so concerned about this. I was under the impression that this CD changer and that this climate control unit, although the same fascia on the front, it's actually two separate units. Though, as it turns out, I think it's actually a shared power source. So I snip the power source, which is annoying, but not unfixable. Basically, I think all I have to do is uh, get one of those little pin, de-pinner things, and so I can pull it open again, pull out the, the, the pin, wire in a new pin, pop it back in, and then reinsert it back into the back of this one. I think <laughs> that should be it. Uh, but I mean, hey, live and learn. That's all right. No big deal. What we should do, though, is power this baby on. Oof, powers up fast. Ready? Ooh, damn. Ooh, damn. Well, got it all sorted out. I uh, I did have a little bit of issues at first. I forgot to plug. I thought I'd broken something with the air conditioning unit, but it turns out I just forgot to plug it back in. So after I had reinstalled everything, which took ages, <laughs> I had to pull it all apart again just to reinstall the plug. So should have taken more time, but that's all right. That's how these things go. I'm pretty stoked with this thing, man. It's pretty freaking great, man. So. I wonder if I can get back to the original home screen. So this is not the original home screen that was on this thing. It comes with that sort of bog standard, pretty dull looking Android uh, head unit screen. What this is, is an application. Uh, I can jump into the applications here and probably find it. All right, so it doesn't show itself in the applications. Fair enough. But it's like this, a gamma car launcher. I'm just trying a bunch out. Um, this one, I believe, is called, dang it, I can't remember, I'll link it in the description. All it is really is a, uh, a skin. It's just a skin for the head unit. So it's like a skin for your, like, it's like a theme for your phone. It's just a theme for the head unit. And it's awesome. You can change all kinds of dials. And this is the free version. You can upgrade to the, like the premium version, but yeah, you can change all kinds of dials and stuff on there. And it's got the built-in GPS with the receiver up there that I slapped on, works perfectly. Um, it tell, it's got the weather, it, obviously it's got access to the internet. It blows my mind how far these Android head units have come. Honestly, like, I remember a friend of mine getting one years ago, and it played Bluetooth and music, but it sucked, man. Like, it was just so average. And he ended up changing it back for, like, a much less feature-filled normal head unit, because the Android one was just so borky. And, jeez, man, they've just come so far. So this is great, like I can do all kinds of things with this. I can load on, I've got a couple of USB sitting down there, which I haven't actually done anything with yet. But as you can see, I've got like Bluetooth and YouTube and Twitch and Chrome and obviously not using Twitch and Chrome and YouTube when I'm driving, because that's just horrendously dangerous. But Bluetooth is great and I can't really show you the uh, the music because I'm actually recording this on my phone so I you know can't play music through it but trust me it works great and uh, the integration with the subwoofer works fantastic the head unit just upgrading the head unit improved the sound quality of these stock speakers I think they're stock speakers in like incredibly massively they sound so much better and again this is just the head unit this is no extra amplification than what's on this head unit and the subwoofer I'm also running through the head unit. So all the amplification for the entire stereo system is running through this, which means that, yeah, it's not ear bleedingly loud, but that's fine. It gets plenty loud and the quality is shockingly good. I'm stunned. I may have just gotten lucky with the combination of this car's speaker system and that subwoofer that I had in the garage, but it's incredibly balanced. Obviously an absolute audiophile and car audio engineer would have something to say about that, but as an enthusiast, I guess, and someone who enjoys good quality music and loud bassy music. It's incredible. It blows me away how good it is. It's, it's really impressive. No complaints, man. Look at it. How good's that? Air conditioning vents work and everything. I've seen other videos on YouTube showing that it was a complicated. No, nope, it was fine. Absolutely fine. Can't recommend it enough. Absolutely stoked with it. So, man, loving it. Absolutely loving it.
So, all I can say then is, what a great start to this. This is turning out so nice. I'm honestly falling in love with this car a little bit. It's super basic and, you know, super, it's not high powered or anything, but the exhaust is already on it. Uh, I did that off camera, but honestly, all that was, was an axle back exhaust. So it was unbolt one pipe, bolt on another pipe. That was it. That was the entire exhaust install. It, it, it was, it took almost no time. Did it in a lunch break at work. And then this, it's making this to be a super comfortable car. I'm really enjoying it so far. So happy days, but I'm going to keep on pushing forward with it. I'm not going to go absolutely crazy with the budget. This is as budget friendly as it can be, but uh, I want to make it a nice place to be. And so far that's coming along real good. So I'm real happy with that. But until next time, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy it, please like subscribe. Uh, it does help with the algorithm and stuff like that. So I hear, I don't know, crap, man. It's at this, at the time of recording, I have zero subscribers <laughs> so maybe one day i'll get a subscriber that'll be top so if you're the first one i will send you something <laughs> i don't know what but something it'll be awesome yeah so thank you very much for watching i appreciate you i appreciate your time and and i hope that uh this is entertaining as entertaining or at least mildly entertaining for you as it is for me because i'm loving this this is great but until next time orth er be good